Aloha, this is Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, this program, this show is the state of the state of Hawaii. Today um, on uh, October 11th, 2021. Welcome to this show. I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll-Dalton. And today we are talking about a very important topic, uh, Hawaii and its COVID-19 condition. And we are most fortunate to have an expert uh, spokesperson from the Department of Health to come in and talk to us about it and show us some data and do some explanations of it. And also let you know that you can have access to that data anytime to take a look at what's going on in Hawaii with regard to COVID-19. We'll also ask some questions about Delta too and see what Brooke has to talk to us about that. Um, the, um, the, the Brooks Bear is um, um, the COVID-19 and pandemic response administrator for Hawaii's Department of Health. And I, I certainly do welcome him here. So glad he can spend some time with us at ThinkTech because he's busy. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Brooks. Welcome. And um, I'm just real excited that you can, you know, focus on this topic here with, with us for uh, the little time we have to keep viewers up to date and to give them a little skill in, you know, where to go get some info if they want to deal with it themselves. But I, I did want to start out by saying, can Hawaii still be proud? Um, it, it's, it is Hawaii in a uh, it's still number one state for being vaccinated. We're at the 69% level. And does that put us on the top of the heap? Well, we're do Stephanie, first of all, thank you very much for having me back. I, I, I appreciate it. And yeah, we, we have been busy here at the Department of Health, as have a lot of people who work in healthcare in Hawaii, because, um, you know, uh, late July turned into that big surge involving the Delta variant, and then August and September were just really, really tragic um, and, and, and very busy times for us here for the Department of Health. So thanks for your patience, uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to come back on. And to answer your question, Hawaii, you know, top of the heap, I don't know, but I'll tell you what, it, it was reported over the weekend um, that Hawaii is uh, the first or will be the first to get a 90% of those eligible vaccinated. So Hawaii is doing really, really well as far as vaccinations. But, you know, we still have, we still have some work to do because there's still a lot of people out there uh, who are not yet vaccinated. Some of, uh, most of them are eligible, um, but others, including children who are not yet eligible, but we expect they will be soon. That is very exciting. Another first for Hawaii. So many times Hawaii has stepped out there on health care for keeping everybody safe from, from uh, sickness and illness and, and uh, other firsts that this state takes on and, and practices. And, and then all of a sudden it disappears from the radar as others catch up and, and take away the news cycle. But no, I'm really glad to hear that. I wanted to know... Um, uh, for a basic question before we get started with your uh, data and talking about it. A basic question is, are COVID-19 and Delta variant counted separately or does the data be, is it con uh, condensed into a COVID number? Can you, can you just talk about that technology? Uh, that yeah, no. When you see a new case count, uh, you know, every day we put out a new case count, whether it's, you know, hopefully going down. But last week, uh, I think on Tuesday, we had 91 cases, which was refreshing after all the triple digit numbers. Uh, today's number is 113 cases. Um, and that include and there, and there is a look at, at today's exact situation. You see today's case count, 113 cases. That includes uh, Delta variant cases and any other strains, per, uh, strains of COVID, perhaps original COVID. Uh, but we do do know that 99% to 100% of the cases that we have uh, subjects to genomic sequencing here in Hawaii in the past several weeks have been Delta. So Delta took over and Delta is now the dominant, if not the only strain of COVID here in Hawaii. Well, that's very interesting. So that when we're talking COVID-19 for right now, for what numbers you have now, those are actually Delta figures. Yeah, that's, that's the, the, the Delta is really um, the only thing we have going right now. And we don't want anything else. We don't want Delta, but we sure don't want any new strains. 
Well, that was my other uh, basic question is now, is anything getting into Hawaii other than the Delta? Because are we isolated a little bit in the Pacific for not having these others that are, you know, are showing up in other places? We're not getting those, right? Well, yeah. we did have other strains, but really the Delta was just so strong, it kind of squeezed everything out. In fact, some people are asking about something called the Mu uh, variant, which came from South America. And we actually had a few cases uh, of the Mu that we found here at our state laboratory uh, in uh, in June and maybe early July. Uh, but again, uh, the Delta has taken over. And um, it, it's not surprising because the Delta is so highly transmissible. Um, it jumps from person to person with great ease. And so it, it kind of took over the Delta, the, uh, the COVID landscape and is the thing that we've been dealing with throughout September, uh, August, September, now into October. That is frightening. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, so um, well, uh, let's let's talk about how it's taken over. Then, would you um, show us some data to um, let us know what the tsunami of another sort is all about? Well, let's go back to that uh, graphic page we looked at for just a moment, and that showed us that we had uh, today 113 new COVID cases. Um, our seven-day average, thankfully. Uh, has gone down uh, steadily over the last couple of weeks. We're down now to 167 cases a day. Our positivity rate is 2.8%. And boy, wouldn't we like to get that down below 1%. But I'll tell you, we had that thing up around 8%, 9% uh, at the peak of um, the surge. And so, uh, you know, at least the number is headed in the right direction. And if we look at the next page, we're really going to see what the surge has done. Um, you can see that uh, in July, the numbers uh, were, were relatively small compared to what they were in late August and early at September. And that is when we really saw the peak of this Delta uh, variant surge. And since then, uh, Hawaii has done a wonderful job of masking up, of maintaining distance. Uh, we had the new um, uh, requ uh, requirements uh, to, uh, you know, to get into uh, restaurants and things. Um, we had new restrictions and no one wants new restrictions, but um, they were really necessary to bring us back down the other side of that epi curve. And then you saw where we are now, uh, we're getting down uh, close to 100 new cases a day, 113 today. And uh, we just got to remain vigilant for a couple more weeks, and we think we can get the numbers down further. And then uh, if you go to the next page, you can see the result. Before you go, would you sure. clarify, would you just go back over that positivity rate so we all understand exactly what that means? So that positivity rate, right. you, know, I mean, you said it was up to eight. That sounds scary. It, it, it absolutely was scary and, and it unfortunately resulted in a lot of hospitalizations and deaths. But um, what that means is that for every 100 people that are tested, 2.8% of them are positive. Um, now, we know that that 2.8% is, is, is an artificially low number because, as you know, there are a lot of vaccine requirements and vaccine mandates. But people, you know, for work, for work, yeah, people have been asked to either get vaccinated or they're given an option to test every week. Well, a lot of people are now testing every week. They haven't, they don't know that they've been exposed to COVID. They don't have symptoms, but they're testing so they can maintain employment. So here are people who feel healthy, don't think they've been exposed, yet they're, they have to go test. So some of them are testing and those test results are, are, are um, deflating our number just a little bit. Um, so 2.8% might be a little lower than, than what we have uh, out there. Uh, but we're headed in the right direction. And if we just can keep it up a little bit longer, I think we're going to be in a much better place. Okay. And then those people have no, there are no problems with the tests any longer. Remember, that's where we started, which was not having enough tests to do the diagnosis. So now that's not an issue. We have plenty of tests for people to have that option if they can't do the inoculation. Is that? Well, d during the surge, we were testing uh, upwards of 10 and 11,000 people every single day. And now we're testing much fewer, uh, maybe, maybe uh, two, three, 4,000 people a day, depending on the day of the week. Uh, and so there's still a high demand for tests. Um, th there can still be a wait for tests depending on where you go, but you will be able to secure a test if you need it, a diagnostic test, certainly through your uh, healthcare provider. Um, and there are, you know, home testing options and things like that available. So w w things have loosened up a little bit in the testing area, um, but, you know, more tests are better. Definitely. We, 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 you know, we want people to have easy access to tests. And so that's why the Department of Health is standing up um, testing at various locations uh, around the state.
Okay, that's very that's very good news. And that's that's an option some people must have for a variety of reasons, right? And the employers have allowed that even when there's a mandate to be tested before coming to work. Okay. Correct. That's working in Hawaii. Very good. Yeah, okay. Now, what what all those cases that we showed you, what that resulted in was actually tremendous and tragic death. Um, September was the absolute worst month. We had a we had 193 people uh, reported as, as having died from COVID in the month of September alone. Today, tragically, we reported, reported four additional deaths. And in the past seven days, 34 additional deaths. So uh, death is a lagging indicator. So you see the case counts go up. Uh, and then several days later, a, a percentage of people land in the hospital. And tragically, um, some of them uh, do not survive. And so while the case counts are up here, it takes the deaths a while to catch up. So while case counts are coming down, we're still seeing um, a significant number of deaths, and that may continue for a couple more weeks. Now, Brooks, you, now this is probably getting more into the medical uh, category, but is it that people come to the hospital too late to get the treatment that might save them, or does it is this a course it's going to take in people that are vulnerable to it? And that's, there's not much to do. Well, there, there, look, we're learning more and more all the time about treatments and, and uh, you know, things like the monoclonal antibodies uh, are proving to be effective if the treatment is administered fairly early on after uh, infection is detected. Um, but COVID can be just so dangerous um, and so deadly that, even those things aren't always going to work, right? We're getting better with the treatments, um, but even if you catch someone early and you get on the monoclonal antibody treatment and, and, and any other kind of um, you know, top-notch treatment in our hospitals, um, COVID some, sometimes uh, is gonna spell doom for people. Um, it, it is just that horrible of a virus. And we have enough of that, all of those interventions in Hawaii, we're not in any way deprived of those because of our distance or isolation. So everything's supplied and ready to go. For Yeah, uh, FEMA really helped us out um, during uh, the peak of our surge. And they sent a team of about 30 people from the mainland out here just to help us administer the monoclonal antibody treatments. And um, we, we uh, regularly uh, order uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, treatments um, from the mainland. And so a few weeks ago, I know we had 600 plus uh, that, that came in. And uh, the week before that, we had actually administered fewer than 500 treatments. So it's not, it's not right for everybody. Your doctor has to prescribe it and you have to be a uh, high risk uh, of severe illness and they have to catch it early on because if you administer the monoclonal antibody treatment too late, it's literally too late. You have to get it um, within the first several days uh, of, of, um, of infection. Oh my, okay, that's very interesting, but I'm reassuring that, that we're in good shape and FEMA is looking after us too. Okay, just wanted to check on that. Well, well, that is, is great. Well, go ahead and um, uh, go through your slides with us so we can see um, any of the other numbers that um, you, you have to show. Well, um, in a moment, we, we can uh, take a look at our data dashboard because I think everyone will want to know where those resources are. But let's go back to the slides that we have not yet looked at because there are a couple other numbers I would like to share. Um, and here's our vaccination rate. Check out Hawaii, 69.6% completed. I mean, that, that's terrific, but we still have work to do. 77.9% um, initiated. Now, those numbers are out of our entire population. We've got more than 1.4 million people in Hawaii, and these numbers include all the people, even the youngsters who are not yet eligible to be vaccinated. Um, you know that we have been administering third doses, booster doses for several weeks now. And so far we've given more than 45,000 booster doses. I really want you to take a look at this next slide though, because this next slide talks about uh, COVID vulnerabilities, okay? Um, some people say, hey, 90% of those eligible are vaccinated. Well, that's fantastic. Really good, Hawaii, way to go, right on. But we had about 432,000 people who are not yet fully vaccinated, and they really come from three buckets. We've got the eligible to be vaccinated, uh, but they have not yet gotten vaccinated. We've got those who have gotten their first shot. 
they've initiated vaccination, but they haven't completed vaccination. That's about 117,469 people. And then we've got more than 207,000 youngsters who are not of age yet to be vaccinated. Now, we're not blaming them and saying that they should be. Of course, they can't be until the vaccine is approved for them. Um, but what we are saying is that they're not vaccinated. So the, the Delta variant can get into that population of youngsters. And while kids don't get that sick, not as sick as adults do, the, the COVID can bounce from person to person to person until it finds somebody who is vulnerable, maybe mom or dad, or maybe grandma or grandpa. And, and then the, the consequences can be tragic. So we've got more than 430,000 people not yet fully vaccinated. We want everyone who's initiated to make sure they get completed. If you've got that first shot, please go and get that second shot. Really important because that first shot, yeah, it gives you some protection, but why not get it all? Get as much as you can. And isn't that the source of the variants is when, when they have moved around and into the hosts and they thrive there. And then all of the time they're doing like these science fiction movies with these replicators. They're constantly trying to grow more legs or heads or tails or whatever they do. And they go through thousands of these developments, but they don't take, but then they'll hit one and take. And that's when we got, got a Delta and then because those opportunities are there for them to reside in the population that's on VAX. Is that kind of how it works? You, you're exactly right. No, exactly right. You, you hit it right on the head. There, there can be no mutation without replication. So the more replication or transmission of the disease there is, the greater chance that there's going to be a mutant, a variant. Um, and, and, you know, what we really don't want to happen is things like the Delta variant, which leads to increased transmission, perhaps link up with some kind of uh, a variant that might lead to more severe illness, because then you'd have a lot of transmission with more severe illness. Look, the Delta variant was bad enough on its own. We don't want any more mutations, no more variants. Uh, let, let's just, we just got to stay the course. Uh, and if we, if we stay the course, then I think we can have a pretty good holiday season. Well, it looks like that may be off on offer if, uh, yeah, we just, do you see this also dependent on the mask wearing and the following up? Oh. Uh, guidelines and there should be some coming out today right I heard that the governor and the mayor may be announcing some opportunities well uh, let, let me tell you these things right here these <laughs> things are are uh, I mean they're fantastic I, you obviously you won't see me anywhere without one um, except here in in the privacy of my own office but um, the, the masks have proven proven to be so effective uh, and yeah, do I like wearing it? No, I'd rather not. But given uh, the, the risk of not wearing it, I'm gonna continue wearing it in, in, until we really put this thing in our rearview mirror. So um, it is really smart for people to continue to wear masks. You know, option number one, definitely get vaccinated. Then when you're indoors, indoors wear your mask um, and, and avoid large crowds. You know, we got Halloween coming up and a lot of people are saying, can my kid go trick or treating? Yeah, being outdoors, a lot safer outdoors with the fresh air and the wind blowing around. Um, if you're going to do anything indoors, you want to wear your mask. You want to wear your mask. If you're going trick-or-treating in a mall or something, anything indoors, you want to wear the mask. But if you're outdoors, um, it, it's a whole lot safer. And I think we're going to be able to do trick-or-treating this year. Um, and you know what? If you got a costume, maybe integrate the mask as part of the costume, and then, then you're really safe. There you go. That's a great idea. Yeah. We usually wear the masks on the top half of our faces, though, for Halloween. So now we're introducing the, the bottom half of the faces with masks. So it's the opposite. But that works. That'll still work, right? Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. The, mask, the masks are, are, are terrific. Hey, uh, Stephanie, I know leading up to this, you had expressed interest in knowing where the COVID is, right? I, I thought that would be interesting to know more about. Yes. Well, it, 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 if we can, your producer, Eric, I think has uh, his magic fingers uh, on uh, a web page. And, and this is our Department of Health Disease Outbreak Control Division web page. And look, this is easy to find. It's right there on the internet. Anyone can find it. You go to Google and just type in Hawaii COVID data. I mean, that's, that, that, that's the easiest way, but Hawaii COVID data, just, you know, go, you know do, a, do a search for that in a search engine um, and, because who can remember disease outbreak control division, right? Just Hawaii COVID data. So that's the, that's the page that opens up and, and that shows you 
uh, right off the top, it, it shows you that, uh, you know, we've had 113 brand new cases today. Um, and uh, to the right of that is the number 81,614. That is the, the total number of COVID cases that we have documented during the pandemic. Um, and then there's an island by island breakdown, both of today's new cases and all the cases uh, that we've had over the course of the pandemic. Uh, and the, the, the tragic number on here is, is, is in the lower right hand corner there, uh, cumulative deaths, 845 deaths um, attributed to COVID or COVID related during this pandemic. Um, and uh, 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 the, the, the two most important pages on that website are the next two pages. So if you scroll down, the next page you're gonna see is this one. Uh, it's the summary metrics page. This is the page that has all the information um, about COVID cases. Uh, and since you asked me where the COVID is, well, you can look around and see there's a, a, a rectangle for each county, Hawaii County, Honolulu, Kauai, and Maui. They tell you how many new cases per day, um, the seven day averages. And then there's also a little graph that shows you uh, what's been happening over the past seven days. And fortunately, Stephanie, you see a downward trend on all the islands, which is, which is good news. And over there on the left in the, in the box shaded gray, uh, you see the 113 new cases and the seven day average, which is now at 167 cases. But I'm gonna ask Eric to click on the little rectangle up there that says the word map. Um, it is just above the uh, Hawaii County um, uh, box there. And that brings up a map of all the islands. Now, this is a heat map. Um, the, the more COVID cases or the hotter the map, the darker the green shade. So, Eric, if you pick an island, like if you pick Oahu, just because, or, yeah, just uh, because a, a lot of people, we have our, our, our population basis here. Um, if you pick Oahu, uh, on the left hand side, uh, you will see the all the islands. Yeah, right over there. And you click on it. Um, the map of Oahu comes up and then the uh, map is coded to show you the number of cases per 100,000 residents in the past 14 days. And what you see is that the darker shades has has more cases. For example, look at the YNI coast. They've had a really difficult time lately. Uh, they're doing a wonderful job now embracing vaccines. Um, but they're playing catch up in that arena. And unfortunately, it's led to, a, a, you know, too many infections. And so uh, that dark green means there have been more than 300 cases. Uh, and if you put your cursor right over it, the number pops up uh, 406 cases in the past 14 days per 100,000 population. And that's why it gets that dark uh you know that dark, dark green shade so it's it's interesting to be able to look around here and 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 see the you know where where the cases uh, are are high and and where they're not but here's something important to remember um covid doesn't just reside where you reside right um covid you, you can go to work like you can live out in y and i and you can drive somewhere to work or to play and you can get COVID elsewhere and then bring it home and it's going to register as if, you know, you got it um, there or, or it resides with you. But remember, COVID travels with you. So, um, you know, I, I'm looking at downtown. Well, what, what do we got there? Like Pearl Harbor area is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is not too dark, but um, it's kind of a light green. But that doesn't mean that people didn't go, you know, from somewhere else and in there and, and, uh, and bring COVID with them. Um, right. But there, there are also these other factors, right? Because I mean, in the Pearl Harbor area with so many military, people are young and healthy there. Whereas in Wainai, and it looks like that other dark, darkly shaded area is, is Waimanalo, right? So we've got a multi-generational family situations there, right? People of all ages, including the, you know, Kapuna. So, you know, each one has all these different characteristics. Yep that confound it, yeah, and make it more likely to spread, yeah. Whereas Pearl Harbor, people are pretty much monitored there for health. I mean- I'll so tell you, the, the, another interesting page is, um, while we have a few, or, or, few, excuse me, a few more minutes, uh, if Eric scrolls down to the next page, which is kind of the vaccination page, and this gives us a wonderful snapshot of what is happening uh, with vaccinations in the state of Hawaii. Uh, as you can see, um, there's a bar, a, a green bar across the top that says 69.6% completed, um, and we've initiated some 77.9%. So we're, yeah. you know, obviously we're going in the right direction. Uh, again, there's a county by county breakdown. But Eric, click on the map because 
Um, there's often a correlation uh, between uh, the, the map you see here. Uh, if you go down, there's another map tab. It's the gray box at the bottom that says map. And you can go, you can look between this uh, visualization and the heat map for COVID cases. And you can often see there's a direct correlation between locations that have low vaccination rates. They will have high COVID-19 count rates um, because they don't have as many people protected. And so a lot of really good tools here. You, you see there's also an age, a bar that breaks down vaccinations by age. That is interesting to look at. Um, and that'll show you how, uh, you know, the wonderful job our Kupuna are doing in getting themselves vaccinated. Um, and our 12 through 17 year olds, um, even though they were the last ones to be eligible to be vaccinated, they're really catching up. So I encourage everybody to, to uh, go to this page. There is just so much more data than we're going to have time to look at here. But if you just Google Hawaii COVID data, you'll find that page. Um, and you, you know, I can spend hours in there getting lost and trying to look at the data and interpreting it. In fact, I'll go for one question. I noticed that the Kauai Island is uh, usually green because it gets the most rainfall in the world, right? But here it looks like it's a little bit greener than the rest of the islands. Is, is that Kauai up there? Or what's the one at the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, Kauai is up there. Yeah, Mount Waialeale, wettest spot on the earth, uh, is green. That whole coastline is green up there, uh, and and they're and they're dark here. They they had a tough time during the variant. Um, now remember, Hawaii has um, a smaller population, uh, the smallest population of any county, so it doesn't take as many people per one hundred thousand to to turn that a darker green um, than say Oahu, which has so very many people. But Kauai had a tough time. They definitely saw more cases than at any other time during the pandemic. Has there been any thinking about that? What what were the factors that, that were involved in increasing it? Well, it's it's the same thing as there is everywhere. Um, it, we, we every two weeks we publish something called the cluster report, um, and it will highlight. You know, it'll talk about restaurants or workplaces or, or 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 events where people got together, and that's where there was transmission. And the moral of the story almost always is that transmission happens when people are indoors and they don't wear their mask, when they gather and when they're unvaccinated. And so that's why we sound like a broken record at the Department of Health, but you know, get vaccinated, wear your mask indoors and avoid large crowds. I mean, I, I, I haven't been to a restaurant in more than a year. Oh. I go and get takeout, but I don't go inside because I just want to protect my family and my coworkers because we're going to get through this. We're getting there. Do it definitely and lead the nation in doing it. It looks like it's going to be like that. And I, I hope we'll get some good, pub, the state will get some good credit for making an effort such as it has, and that the health department has done such an excellent job of monitoring and, report, and reporting. Um, I wanted to say that the um, other question, which doesn't seem to be so much a factor, is it's not our visitors coming in that are bringing so much infection, right? I don't hear you saying that. I hear you, we're doing it to ourselves. Well, I, uh, community transmission is really a, a, a buzz phrase, right? Um, and uh, certainly visitors uh, will bring it from time to time, as will returning residents. But here's the difference. Uh, if I'm a visitor, I go to Hawaii, maybe I come with my family, I kind of stay in my bubble, right? I've got my family and we rent a car and then we go here and we go there. And But when I'm a resident and I travel and then I come back to Hawaii, well, I got to get together with my buddies. I got to see my friends. I'm going to go to work. I already have this established network of people and it's more people um, than the, the visitor will interact with. The visitor might go to a restaurant and the waitress comes up and the waitress or waiter is wearing a mask and they don't spend that long standing there. Um, and, and so the virus doesn't have as much of an opportunity from jump to jump from one person to the other. Um, so the visitor doesn't transmit it as much as the resident. We come back, we spend a lot of time with our friends, our family, our coworkers. You know, we get together uh, with our sports teams or, or, or youth leagues or whatever. Uh, and there's a lot of opportunity. The interaction between people is really when it spreads. Uh, and because we live here, because we already have those relationships, we're, we're bound to see more people and spend a lot more quality, up-close time in close proximity with more people than the visitor will. They move here, they move there, they want to see the sites, and, and they, they, they keep moving and, and don't um, have those prolonged exposures with uh, as many other people. 
Well, that is so explanatory. Uh, that is very interesting. This this presentation has been most thoughtful and um, um and most um interesting and informative books. I so appreciate that you've been able to take some time to spend it here with us on Think Tech Hawaii. And I I know I seriously know you're just a worker bee for sure for this entire year. And uh, thank you very much for that effort. Uh, that's a tremendous gift to to the um to the state of Hawaii. So I think that we're getting to aloha time. And um, I just wanna thank you again for uh, being um, a guest on the show. And this show is the state of the state of Hawaii. And uh, we've been talking with Brooks Baer, who's a COVID-19 and pandemic response administrator for Hawaii's Department of Health. And uh, as Hawaii, be, looks like it might be leading our nation in the right direction as how to, to manage the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. I want to thank him again, Mahalo Brooks and Mahalo viewers for your uh, viewing of the Think Tech program today. And we'll see you again in two weeks on the state of the state of Hawaii. Mahalo.